One of the things about Six Sigma is a lot of the training is trying to turn people into statisticians to help them, you know, learn how to make all the right perfect decisions and then uh, but unfortunately all the software out there is really designed for you to make all those decisions and then choose your data. And the QI macros are the only tool out there that actually asks you to select your data first. Now what this enables us to do is actually to help you do all that analysis. So, you know, most people are actually terrified of math and statistics, but I've found if I can make it easy for you and embed all those those forest of decision trees that you see so often in, in Six Sigma into the software, then it will make it easy. So to do that end, I've actually created four different wizards here. There's a stat wizard, uh, there's a pivot table wizard, a control chart wizard, and a chart wizard. So it's pretty simple. If you have data, <coughs> like this and you want to do some hypothesis testing. The whole idea behind hypothesis testing is I want to know if the the averages or the means and the variation amongst these four different samples are the same, number one, or different. And if they're different, which one would be the optimum one for me to choose for my manufacturing application or whatever. Now you could go in here and if you knew what you're doing you could choose a know of a single factor. But what I did was with the Stat wizard, Stat wizard will go look at that data and go, what can I do with this data? Well, the first thing it's going to do is it actually goes out and does descriptive statistics and looks to see if your data is normal or non-normal. Then it chooses what kind of analysis it can do. And so in this case, it's going to do uh, a Levine's test to come up and determine that the variances are equal and an ANOVA single factor to discover that the means are different. Right, and so you don't have to read the p-values, you don't have to evaluate anything, right? And even on each one of the things we run now, it'll say accept the null hypothesis because our p-value is uh, greater than our alpha value here, right? And the variances are the same, all right? So this is, this is kind of the structure of how this all works, all right? So it's going to tell you. Now, some people, the purists may say, well, why are we doing all that nonsense? Well, because we want more people to embrace Six Sigma. So it'll from that one set of data, it'll do descriptive statistics, come up with an Anderson Darling value, give you a histogram, give you a box plot, give you confidence intervals, give you a normal probability plot. And then it's going to go out and it's going to do uh, variance using Levine's test. And again, it'll tell you straight up, you know, whether you passed or failed. Uh, because it's not sure, it's going to try a chi-square. Because when you have counts or integers, this could also be a chi-squared, and in this case, the variables are independent. And then I'll do a one-way ANOVA on all this. And as you can see here, uh, if I could get that to shrink down a little bit, um, here it'll say, okay, well, our p-value is zero, which is less than our 0.05 value, so we reject the null hypothesis. That just means the means are all different. You know, if I selected two of these, uh, and tried to do that, well, if I came back to the stat wizard, it'd say, oh, well, uh, that looks like we ought to do an F test and a T test. So the variance is the same, the means are the same. So in this case, 10% is as good as 15%. 10% is cheaper, take, take it, all right? So that's how easy it can be to do statistics kinds of things. Now let's go over to pivot tables. And one of the things I find here, even though I clicked on it too fast, is that essentially there's a lot of data out here that looks like line-by-line uh, -line transaction data. And we'd like to summarize all of that. And most people don't really know how to use the pivot tables themselves and insert them. And so in the QI macros, I set it up so you can just click on up to four individual headings and choose the pivot table wizard, and it'll go summarize all the data for you. And so by day, here you can see our values, so we could control chart that. And across this way, we've got our totals, so we could actually pivot table that. That gets us to an improvement story very quickly. All right? So pivot tables are a very easy thing to do with the, the QI macros. Now, that's it. So stat wizard, pivot table wizard. Now let's come over to the other data. And one of our chunks of data here is the... Uh, control chart wizard. So if we had data like this that's bursting strength of bottles, 
Literally, I can select that with my mouse. Now, the control chart wizard is only going to look for control charts to do with this data. And so if you click on that, if you knew what you're doing, you'd come in and say, oh, well, that's an X bar R chart. But not everybody knows. And so essentially, if you click on the control chart wizard, it'll look at that data and go, oh, that must be an X bar R chart. And it'll draw your X bar R chart for you. Here's your range chart and our X chart. And so all of that is in statistical process control, right? And so that mistakes proof trying to figure out which one of these gazillion charts to choose. Now there's all this other stuff in here if you need it. You know, this is for the experts and by golly, let them go. Uh, but for the average person, I call them no belts, right? Because they haven't any belt training necessarily. Those people need a tool to help them make good choices about what charts to choose. And they sometimes just get you know, trapped. What do I use here? Blah, blah, blah. And so let's just stop that, all right? Now we could take that same data, and I just recently added the chart wizard. And the chart wizard is going to draw the most likely charts for your data. So it's going to look at this data and go, well, first, let's do uh, descriptive statistics, box plots, X bar S chart, or X bar R chart, and voila, all right, there's our data. So if we come all the way over here, you're going to see we've done descriptive statistics again. So this will give you a histogram. Now, if you wanted to run this as a histogram with control limits, you could come back and do that. There's a box plot and confidence intervals and a normal probability plot. So our data is normal at some level. And here's a box plot going uh, by sample. Here's a box plot by observation group. And again, this is like a little histogram. And then we have our control chart over here, which shows that you know we've got some issues going on here. And so it's very easy to draw uh, a lot of charts and get a lot of information very quickly. And this is what I normally do anyway in my head, but why not just build it into the software and let the software do that for you? So there you have it, stat wizard, pivot table wizard, control chart wizard, chart wizard, all in the QI macros, right? And so it doesn't matter what your data looks like, uh, right? We can get in there and figure out how best to organize that data and for hypothesis testing, charting, analysis, and summarization. Those are the control chart wizards in the QI macros. You can download a 30-day trial from qimacros.com.